In this tutorial, we're going to be continuing with the series with GraphQL and what we're going to be doing is getting information from our schema. We'll be making this application, which is just a list of information and when we click the button load more, we're going to be loading more of it. So let's see how we can do that. Last time we downloaded the schema and what we have here is a couple of queries that the schema provides. And what we're going to be doing is showing you how we can retrieve some of them. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the launches query. And let's see how we can actually go from having this to outputting it in our application. First, we have to be familiar with what is the query providing. So in our case, we have two arguments. And the first of them is page size. And the second one is after. When we read about it, we can see that we are interested in this one, which is that the after one, when we pass this type cursor, then it's going to be returning the next result. So you can think of it as pagination. And this cursor variable is accessible through this launch connection and it gives us cursor. So by knowing that, we can create our own query that can use as launches and we can return the specific data that we want. When we go in our project where our schema is, we need to create there a couple of new folders just to separate our things and one of them will be queries and the other one will be fragments. Now if you're not that much familiar with the queries, fragments and everything that GraphQL provides, but just in short, queries is whenever you want to retrieve something, whatever it is from the GraphQL, we're going to be using queries and fragments is just something that is being common between multiple queries that we're going to be having or mutations. But again, this will be more in depth in future tutorials. Now let's go check out our query. Every time we're creating a query, we're first starting with a keyword query, then we're giving it a name. And then if we have arguments that we want to pass, we just pass them with the name of it and the type of the argument. After that, we do our query. In our case, we would like to retrieve launches from the GraphQL. We saw that it has only two arguments and we would like to use only one of them. And that's why we are passing only the after argument, which is going to be helping us paginate through our records. Next, inside the curly brackets, we are setting up whatever information we would like it to retrieve. And in our case, because we can see that the launches is returning launch connection, when we check what launch connection has, it has a cursor, it has has more, and it has launch, which is another type. So every time there is a custom type over here, we need to specify what exactly that custom type needs to return. It cannot be returning just the custom type. You need to specify explicitly if it's going to return site, mission, or every single parameter from here. In our case, when we check it, we can see that we our launches returns a launch title and this is a fragment like I mentioned. We say it's a fragment when we put three dots up front and then the name of the fragment. And when we go and check out the fragment, which is launch title, again, we name it by fragment, launch title, and we say what type of fragment is it. In our case, because it's a launch type, we just say it's type launch and inside of it we set every single thing that we would like this fragment to be returning and like we can see we are returning the id is booked and rocket and the rocket one as we can see again it's another type so that's why we have another curly brackets but this time it's not a fragment inside we just would like to return the id and the name every time you're creating a custom query because we would like to access it from our code we cannot just do it like this. We cannot just go and say, well, we would like to get the query with get launch list without doing anything else. That's why we go to our Gradle and then we go to Apollo and generate Apollo sources. When you generate them, this means that every single query, mutation or whatever it is, is going to be generated and then we can access it through our code. Now let's see how we have set up the Apollo. Last time we did our Gradle setup and the download schema part, but this time we're going to see how we can do the dependency injection. I'm using Hilt, so when we have initialized Hilt and we want to create a module that will be specific for GraphQL, 
what we'll need is access to the URL and then we would like to have this module and inside of it we have just OKHttp OK builder which we're setting with some OKHttp OK login so we can see our requests in the console and then we are actually building our Apollo. So there is nothing specific here, it's just our Apollo client builder and then we're passing in the server URL and the OKHttp OK client and then we build. Now we have everything that we need to access the Apollo client from our code. When we know that, let's go to our screen. How the screen works is we do have our view model here and in the view model, every time that we load the application screen, we have this get launch list, which will retrieve the initial list. And every time that we are actually clicking on the load button, we're going to be also loading this uh, get launch list, but we're passing it a cursor as well. So if the cursor is no, then it's going to be loading the initial values. And if it's not no, it's going to be loading the next values. Let's check out what's happening in this launches screen. And when we go inside of it, we're just having a repository and this repository is returning data. Now, when we go to the repository, we can see what's happening. So in our case, to access our query, we need to have access to the Apollo client. And because we're using Hilt and we did our module injection, we can just access it with Apollo client. And then we say web service, which is our Apollo dot query, because we want to access our query. Then we say the name of the query, as we can see, we can access it over here. And remember, this is because we generated the Apollo sources. This also works if you build the full application, but there is no need if you can just generate the sources. And then we're passing our after parameter. After is actually optional parameter. That's why we're passing our value like optional dot present, and then we're passing after. And remember, this can be null because if it's null, in our case, it will just be producing the first page of results. After that, we would like to access this data. And GraphQL has its own objects usually, but it's way more secure if we create our own data classes. So in our case, we would like to return this list of launch data and launch data will always be something. It can have zero values or it can have anything else. And that's why we do no checks on many places because we have to ensure that every time we're returning a success, there will be something. Even if it's empty list, there will be something. In your case, it might be different, but it's always to have some custom data classes and not use the ones that GraphQL provides you. And this is just because you're making sure that you have data. So after we do our checks here, we're just adding the data to the list. When we go back to the launch view model, we can see that when our data is returned, this is our success. We're just going to be adding to the existing list in our view state, the new data, and then we're going to be updating this launch list. So every time that we click the load more button, new data will be here. You can see how you can create a query and just return some data with GraphQL. That was it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more.